so when I go back to this lyric, it's, you know, 80,000 singing with me. This was the dream. But throughout that song, first times, Ed Sheeran is talking about how all these things that he thought that would make him content, that would fulfill him in what he's been chasing. It's not that. What he found was something else. You see, a lot of these artists, they always say that I've achieved every single thing that I could have. And then they start a family and that's their biggest accomplishment. So it makes you think a little bit, right? It makes you think, what am I chasing? What do I really want? Because sometimes we wander aimlessly. And I'm not talking about starting a family right now. That's, that's not That's not the point of this. The point of this is, what is our bigger end goal? What are we really shooting for? Because we have these ideas of what we want to achieve. And then once we get it, it's not fulfilling. So what really is it? This is Sad Boy Radio. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. I'm your host, Matt. And today we got a special guest. We also got a new special setup. Uh, our guest has been the photographer for the Lyrical Lemonade nine-year anniversary show, and he's been working on the Chicago Game of Skate with Lotto over there at Ly Lyrical Lemonade. Go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. My name is uh, Sketchy Frankie. I also go by Frankie. I don't even want to get into how you got the name Sketchy Frankie. I know your ass probably just picked some random ass shit, didn't you? No, there's actually a meaning behind it. Okay, what's the, what's the story? Give us a story real quick. All right, so in terms of, like, the skateboarding world, you know, like... The way you land tricks, it's either clean, sketch as fuck, or trash, you know? And usually when I was, like, growing up skating, all my tricks are all sketch, you know? So, like, I land, like, lopsided and stuff like that. <laughs> all crazy and stuff. So, like, one of my friends, like, bro, why you always land everything, like, sketchy, bro? And I, like, that kind of, I kind of, like, dig, like, that term. So I was like, fuck it, I'll use that as my name, Sketchy Frankie. Mm -hmm. That just became my Instagram name ever since. And shit, it seems like a lot of your skating has followed through with your photography as well, right? So you've been able to make a name for yourself in a sense. You've been shooting these shows. You've been doing a lot of work for free, honestly. And that was something that I admired about your work ethic when you first hit me up, right? When you first hit me up, you know, it, it obviously takes time to, you know, look at someone's profile, figure out who they are. So, you know, when you were offering to even just help me out you know i'm i'm not starting but we're building right we're consistently building so the fact that you were willing to help us out and just do it for free it shows how determined you are to make it in the fucking industry you know what i'm saying so i mean i just wanted to give you props on that shit but skating has really followed you know what you've done right and i wanted to really dive a little bit deeper into that how did you transition from skating to photography in skateboarding it's all about like like the camera you know like this is how you like see the like how people do their tricks you know like ever since i was like younger i always like thrasher mag that's like skate culture you know and like looking through the mags you see all these like photos of like with even like with a fisheye lens like how close like a photographer can get to like a skater without obviously getting hit in the face or something and it's just like it's like intertwined in a way it's all about getting like these clips getting the photos that's what i've been all about ever since i got into skating like posting like clips on the gram you know like oh i took like a sick photo of my myself doing like a trick or something you know but how did the passion switch from skating to music and i guess switch wouldn't be the key word because obviously you still love doing both but how did it transition into it it's not like really a transition because it's like like when you back then when you upload like clips on the gram you use like music for your edits you know like me and my boys like my boy vargas we always use like famous decks or like rich the kid you know like that one part's like plug you know when you like land a, like a trick like dude like that's like all about it you know like, making it look good, sound good. Like, even, like, on Thrasher videos, there's, like, some videos where, like, if I hear a song, I'm like, oh, um, Nigel Houston used that in his part, that Meek Mill song. You know, it's, like, it's all intertwined into that, to that little culture where you start tying in, like, music stuff 
with the uh, skateboarding. So now why concert photography then? I don't even know, bro. <laughs> I just like went into it, it. It just happened. Yeah, it just yeah. happened. You know, it was like I admired taking like photos of skateboarders and stuff like that, and I was like just thinking about music, and I was like, I was thinking, you know, like Rich the Kid, he skates, you know. So I was like, dude, like, let me, I want to take some pictures of like some like celebrities or like some music uh concerts i also saw like some of my friends like steven like he would shoot like these concerts and i was like dude that's so cool you know that's just dope and it really ties into you know the topic we got going on for today it's one of those things that just kind of happened over time a lot of the times we pick up something with no end goal in sight we're just kind of doing it and we eventually get good at it you know that's the crazy part is that these skills slowly build up but we never realize it until one day we're a little too far and now we got to decide okay what are, what's next what are we going to do and especially when you're doing something creative it's harder because then people set these expectations for you of what are you going to do you know i've seen you grow and build but if you stay stagnant if you stay you know doing the same thing forever people lose interest in that shit so that's why you need to change. That's why you need to grow. And for me, I've noticed a lot of changes in my life throughout this two-year period of doing interviews, talking to people. I've noticed I talk less because now I'm doing a deep dive into the people that I'm interviewing. And it's not so much a conversation of what's going on in my life, but how do we really encapsulate the topic and connect it to every single person out there. For you, what are some changes you've noticed about yourself throughout this journey? My perspective on, like, what I'm here for, basically. Like, what am I doing, like, you know, type of thing. So this year changed everything. Before this year, I was just, like, focused on skating. Like, dude, I want to skate. I want to be a skate photographer. I want to shoot clips. I want to make, like, my own video part for some skater. And then, like, literally, like, like that like now i'm doing like concert photography i'm like shooting artists more now and it's like it's crazy because i also see like a shift in like passion too like yeah i like skating like that's where like i started but like like when you're shooting skateboarding obviously he's not gonna like land the trick every try it's trial and error and i see that in the same way as like photography you know like especially with like, these concerts like it's all trial and error trying to see like what works or like what that person's gonna do, like what the skater's gonna do in a sense like that. So what changes have you seen within yourself? I have like a lot of anxiety too. So it's like with music photography, it kind of like, cause you need, it's hard. You can't be like an introvert and like these things, like that's how you get like gigs and stuff. You know, you have to be more extrovert and to myself, I'm more introverted, so um, that's all I mostly relied on unless you were, like, close with me and stuff like that. But I feel like this year I stepped a little bit more outside that comfort zone because, like, once I got into music photography, it was, like, all, like, how do I get to the next show? That means I have to start talking. Like, I have to be, like, like trying to make connections, network with people, which is how I got like so far this year with that um showing my extrovert self so how do you feel like your view of this career path has been impacted by learning these lessons over this past year dude it changed everything almost like all i want to do is take photos all i want to do is do anything with the camera like i even want to start doing like more videography this year also and it's just like shift in passion in a way so the same love i felt like for skating this is what i feel now ever since i got introduced to it and like how that industry works and i like it i like the feeling of it of like um being able to like use my camera to like connect people more not only with the artists but also i still do skating with the camera i still have like that function with it what story do you feel like you're telling through doing photography because obviously you're telling a story right just like you said i like being able to connect these artists closer with their fans closer with the people who actually give a fuck about them yeah 
when I think about connecting with somebody, you're almost telling a story. And that's what you did with the speaker box Christmas party post. You were able to tell a story of how the night went just through these pictures. And it was all love over there, you know? Everybody, if they didn't know each other, you knew each other that day. And it, it was just a complete, like, warm vibes type shit. So for you, how do you feel like you're telling another artist's story through these pictures? When fans go to, like, these concerts and stuff, they only live it, like, once. They only live that moment once. So being able to, like, capture what they see at that moment helps it connect more to their favorite artists because when they see that picture, they're like, oh, shit, I remember when he, like, jumped in the crowd and did this. I'm so glad this was, like, captured, you know? Or even videotape, too, works. So then give us your background, man. Give us your story. Why was it so important for you to capture those moments? Obviously, there had to have been a moment where you remember the concert being so great that had you not captured that moment, you would have felt like you lost it forever. One memorable one that sticks with me the most is, like, the Corday photos I took at Lollapalooza. Like, at that day... He brought, like, a whole new type of, like, setup to himself, like, almost like, I don't know, he was copying someone in terms of, like, looks, and he had, like, this beard thing and mustache. Wasn't it fake? Yeah, it was fake. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, his mustache fell, like, halfway through the show, you know? And I took this one photo, and it's just, like, him just, like, standing there just like this with, like, the beard and stuff, like, portrait perfect almost. And that photo just, like, blew up in, like, so many ways in terms of, like, funny or, like, based off just, like, how he had, like, that setup. So that was definitely a memorable moment because that moment also got me um, to Juice World Day as well, too. Touch on that story a little bit. Elaborate. How did you guys make that connection? You know, obviously, you took the pictures. It was something that they saw, but... They're, you know, most of the time they're not going to be like, who the fuck took that shit? In, ter in terms of my experience, no one has ever came to me asking for pictures or, like, who am I or, like, if I want to, like, shoot this or that. It's more of, like, me reaching out out there. For example, like, during Lollapalooza, they gave us this list of each artist and, like, their management. And I was like, dude, like, you just gave me, like, some powerful piece of paper that... After I take these photos, I could literally send to, like, their Your managers. school gave it to you? No, it was uh, Lollapalooza gave it to us. Oh, For anyone shit. who had, like, a, a press or media or photo credential, they gave, they gave each of you, like, a PR type list, you know? And I was like, dude, I'm going to send it, you know? This might, like, I don't know, might bring me something or anything. So uh, I literally went through all my pictures Sent it to all the people, like Young Nudie, found his manager, sent it. Corday, found his manager, sent it. All on their emails. And through there, the only, out of all those people I sent emails to, the only one that reached back to me was Corday's management. They were like, yo, like, these are sick as fuck. Like, thank you for sending us. Um, and then they were asking me, like, do you plan to use these for any other, like, publication and stuff like that? And I was like... No, uh, not these, or I just posted it on Instagram if that matters and stuff like that. And then that's how I made, like, that connection, being able to talk to one of Corday's management. Maintaining that relationship, that's another step in what you're doing. Being a photographer, being a concert photographer specifically, how have you gone about doing that? In terms of, like, the Corday photos, with that one, I kept reaching out to them, like, oh, I noticed, like, Corday is going to be here. Is it okay if I could shoot that event for you guys? And then that's how I got the the juice wear one because um, I'm not gonna disclose like he or she's information, but they were like, yeah, sure, we'll get you in. And um, they reached out to people running Juice World Day, and they're like, put me on the list. Speaker Box was the one running it though, right? I'm pretty sure, but I wasn't working with Speaker Box, and that was one way I got into Juice World Day because there's actually two ways I got into. Because I was only supposed to just shoot Corday and that's it. So what was the second way? I got invited to a party for Juice World. Um, it was like an invite only type party. I just came from work. Glow up Jake messaged me. I was literally about to go to sleep too. Jake messaged me. He was like, yo, slide to this party. Like um, grade eight people are here. 
Steve Cannon is here, you know, and they need a photographer. And I was like, dang, dude, I was about to go to sleep, you know? And I'm like, bet. And I literally just went all the way over there to, like, the party. That's where I met up with everyone. Also, um, I got introduced to Steve Cannon, um, more grade A people, Bivy, ZZZ, um, and, oh, Mike P., all good people. And then from there, um, see, I was talking to Steve, and we were just talking about, like, like our backgrounds and stuff like that. We were just chopping it up. It's funny because we actually grew up, like, in a similar neighborhood, too, so we had, like, a connection there. And then he asked me, like, yo, like, you go, you're coming tomorrow, right, to shoot? And I was like, yeah, but I think I'm only shooting Corday, you know, for, like, their pictures. And then from there he was like, oh, dude, I got you. And then right there I got, I was shooting for Corday and Grey Day. And that's just, you know, the beginning of your story. You know, uh, I want to highlight you specifically because, once again, you're you're going out of your way to make things happen. A lot of people aren't willing to work for free right away or they're not willing to lend a helping hand just because they like somebody else's work. A lot of the times nowadays, everybody wants to get paid. Shit, I want to get paid. Vic wants to get paid. Everybody wants to get paid. But you got to start from the bottom and work your way up. So, yeah, man, you're on to big things. Big moves. That's my catchphrase. Uh, big moves? Not yeah. sad boys for real. That's the catchphrase. <laughs> Aside from all of this, right, I wanted to specifically hit on the why do I do it, you know? So when we were talking, when I shot you the question, you said, you know, I, I have so many things that I want to do, but how do I get there? And I don't really know my end goal. I don't know what I want to do per se. Should I narrow it down? You know, I'm facing all these different problems when it comes to booking these shows because of, you know, mental health. It I wouldn't say issues, but mental health challenges. So I took a song from Ed Sheeran. It's called First Times. And he, in the song, he says, I thought it'd feel different playing Wembley, 80,000 singing with me. It's what I've been chasing because this is the dream. And these dreams that we consistently chase, getting that big show that you just shot, the next show, what is it going to be? For me, it's getting that big interview. Okay, I got that interview. The next interview, the next interview, the next interview. And I've reached the point where I feel like I've done so many amazing interviews. I'm not saying that we've done every single fucking interview we can do, but I'm saying that we've done a lot in the short period of time that we've had. And we went from being this podcast that not a lot of people knew about. We had 400 followers for I don't know how many fucking months. And... As time went on, we kept growing and growing and growing. And when it comes to creatives, now I have creatives that I don't even know reaching out to me. I have A&Rs reaching out to me saying, get this person on, let's do some work. And it's a dope feeling because it's not a position I ever thought I'd see myself ending up being in. I didn't even know how to get to that point. So when I go back to this lyric, it's, you know, 80,000 singing with me. This was the dream. But throughout that song, first times, Ed Sheeran is talking about how all these things that he thought that would make him content, that would fulfill him in what he's been chasing. It's not that. What he found was something else. He goes on to say, the greatest thing that I have achieved is four little words down on one knee. And he's talking about his now wife, who the greatest achievement that he ever had was falling in love and starting a family. And as I continue to get older, right, I'm only 22, this young as fuck. But I continue to have this mentality and I see it in myself that I'm just kind of living day by day by day. I don't have this sturdy foundation. My foundation is a degree. That's the only thing I have that's a sturdy foundation. 
But now I see myself looking into more careers recently. I see myself trying to find a backup plan. And I want to continue doing what I'm doing. But I also don't want what I'm chasing to feel like it means nothing. You see, a lot of these artists, they always say that I've achieved every single thing that I could have. And then they start a family and that's their biggest accomplishment. So it makes you think a little bit, right? It makes you think, what am I chasing? What do I really want? Because sometimes we wander aimlessly. And I'm not talking about starting a family right now. That's, that's not that's not the point of this. The point of this is, what is our bigger end goal? What are we really shooting for? Because we have these ideas of what we want to achieve. And then once we get it, it's not fulfilling. So what really is it? For you, what do you believe your end goal is? I feel like my end goal changes every day. Like like you said before, like you like when we were having our conversation, like I literally want I've been trying like doing little everything. So like doing like the photography stuff, doing like the Chicago skate stuff, doing this and that. You know, like I feel like each of those things has its own like end goal. So what do you see as the end goal for each of those then? Being satisfied how I like lived my life. Something that somebody had once shared. It said that don't set goals for yourself because once you achieve a goal, there's nothing left to achieve. So you don't you don't technically want to ever set an end goal, right? But you got to have milestones that you want to hit. And that's something that I failed to set for myself. I failed to set up, okay, once we hit this person, we're on to this person. King Inez's interview just hit a thousand views. And I didn't even notice it. And I wish I would take the time to sit back and appreciate the fact that, damn, we really did that shit. We finally hit a thousand. But we haven't taken the time to even sit back and say, damn, like this is the first time Vic's even hearing about this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't take the time to say, damn, that shit was raw as fuck. We're on to bigger things. Okay, what's after 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000? Keep on hitting the big numbers. So setting an end goal, that's not necessarily the primary thing, but having those milestones. So what would be the next big milestone for you to reach for the game of skate, for this photography career that you've started? Like for like Chicago skate, I want to make it like huge. Like, you know how everyone's like, oh, I got to go to Cali to make it in skating. Nah, bro, I want to make it here, dude. Like uh, I always talk to my friend Brandon. I was like, dude, low key, Chicago is like the next LA, bro. People want to come here for like the opportunity and like for the skate community. I want it to be like, dude, you guys could come to Chicago and make it here, you know? We have a huge skate scene here that's, like, not even, like, seen as much on media and stuff like that. So I really want to, like, push that further, not only for me, but, like, for other people as well, too. Like, I always try to, like, share their shit so the overall thing is being shown to, like, the public eye. Like, recently, my friend Corey... His name's Trabajando Skate, like, on Instagram. He dropped this one video. It's called Bronto. And it's basically, like, a montage of, like, skaters from Chicago, Spain. They went, they actually went over there. Um, and they and they went to, like, these famous skate spots. And guess what? That video made it on Thrasher. Like, they put some, like, Chicago public eye on that. And I just want to keep, like, the ball rolling. Like, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Which is why I also started doing like this one thing called uh sketch which is like the site um i launched which has skating music so it basically has all of the stuff i like in there and it's just putting a public eye to chicago like look at all these great things we have you know so that kind of ties into like kind of what my end goal is like putting more of a spotlight on chicago and like the culture in it shown through like my photographs shown through um chicago skate but the thing is it's not just me like you said earlier like 
I do shit for free sometimes. It's like, dude, because, like, I want to help grow it. I want everyone to see, like, what you're doing, you know? Like, it's not all about my benefit, but I want to see you grow so you could leave something, too. Like, I don't... I don't personally like being, like, selfish like that. I want, like, everyone in my surroundings to, like, feed off of that. Once again, that's why it's so dope that you do what you do. I feel like I got to ask the basic question right now, and I hate myself for it. Why do you feel like you want to put on for Chicago like that? A lot of people, just like you said, are willing to leave Chicago. They're willing to go to Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, because they feel like there's more opportunity. They feel like there's a lot more support and infrastructure in these cities. So why not Why not take that route? Why not go somewhere that's already got that in place? Because you could literally be, like, the origins of here, dude. Like, you could build it here. Like, like not to be, like, cliche or anything, but you could do anything you put your mind to. How do you think L.A. became what it is? Oh, because people over there started repping, like, their stuff or based around LA, like the way they structured it, like, oh, like all the celebrities go there. And then once you have that in your mind, it's like, oh, I have to go there. But do you really? Like, do you really have to go over there? Like, what could you do here that you could like build upon? Like, prime example, Lyrical Lemonade, like, they're not in Cali. They're not in any other state. They're in Chicago. Like, they're growing like the space here. And building that structure. One thing um, I saw in a one Cole Bennett interview on, I think it was the Hot Ones. Um, he was talking about, like, the man, the dude asked him, he was like, like the, the similar question, like, what's the end goal? Like, like, some people are, like, really greedy with what they have and stuff like that and, like, hold to it. Like, example would be Cole Bennett and Lyrical. And... What hit me the hardest was when Cole Bennett was like, I kind of want to have Lyrical have not like a deadline, but go through its years to inspire others to create something even better than Lyrical. So overall, just building on top of that and then also being in Chicago, you know, he wants to see people like surpass him. And that's what I want to see like in the city of Chicago, no matter what culture it is. It could be skating, it could be um, the music industry, it could be like the artwork from here, um, Chicago artists and stuff like that, just growing upon it. And just like you said, it's being able to leave something behind, helping others build something to leave behind. And it makes me think of the Drake song, Unforgettable. He says specifically, and I got to pull out my fucking phone, uh, but he says, I just really hope that you'll think of me because I'm trying to be unforgettable. And that's kind of always been my motto. I've always wanted to build something and make sure that people remember who I am once I'm gone. That's always been the bigger picture. But I forgot about that. Because you get so caught up in these little goals and you get caught up in what's next all the time. Mm -hmm. And I consistently talk about this every week almost it feels like. And I'm tired of it. But maybe that's what I needed. I think I'm like in the same boat as you. Like I recently I noticed I've been like setting small goals for myself of like, oh, this is next, that's next, that's next. But I haven't really like stepped back to see that bigger picture like that. And even with trying to be unforgettable, it made me also realize what is that worth? What is the worth in becoming unforgettable when the little things fall to the side? You know, that that's what really life's about, the small things, the little wins, and just being happy with what you got. But there's that goal that you have, and you're like, damn, that sounds pretty good. Never being forgotten, always being remembered, your work meaning something to everybody. But that don't really mean shit because not everybody's opinion fucking matters to you. At least that's how I thought about it when I sat down and wrote this outline. I was like, damn, what is it really worth? That's when it makes me question, like, why am I putting so much energy into this shit when I'm just trying to fucking, I don't know. Maybe that's me being complacent now. It's I'm trying to be content. I don't want to be fucking content. I want to be fucking great. 
But as you get older, you know, that life hits you a little bit harder and you're like, damn, like, what what am I going to do to make this money? How am I going to survive? There's so many people that want to live an artistic lifestyle and so many people that want to continue to create. But there's got to be people who do work jobs for everybody else to do what they want. You know, everything's a job. It just so happens that these skills, they can translate into something else. They can either make your life harder, you can make your life harder, or you can work harder. You know what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Yeah, you're making sense. I'm just, like, processing what you're saying. That's why sometimes I don't speak much because I'm, like, just trying to understand where you're coming from. Well, pinpointing pinpointing this is, you know, the first battle. Pinpointing your next goal. Pinpointing where you want to go. Pinpointing what's going to fulfill you. The second goal, The second battle is the mental health battle. You know, dealing with anxiety, dealing with these mental health issues that, Nobody else sees because they're all internal struggles. It's like Polo G said in Rap Star. He says, anxiety killing me. I just want to leave Earth. When they ask if I'm okay, it just make everything seem worse. Try and explain your feelings sound like some you rehearsed. When you're going through these issues, when somebody asks you, are you okay? You never give them the real fucking answer. Everybody says, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm decent, yeah, whatever. Because just like he said, you know, if I, if I really tell you what's going on, you're going to think like, ah, oh, no, he's playing. Nah, that's not real. And it just shows another aspect of an artist having everything they could have wanted. And Rap Star is talking about just cop the BMW, chains clanging. And that's the chorus. The chorus makes it seem nice. But the verse is talking about the deeper issues where... You know, he misses the old him. He misses certain things about himself that will never be able to be changed. These issues that continue to live on with you. For you, what kind of mental battles have you faced and how has it impacted you? Fear like failure, you know, I told you this before. And just like having like so much on my plate sometimes just like overwhelms me. And it's like since I already put that out there. It's also that expectation of, like, actually, like, fulfilling it, you know? And sometimes it does get hard because I'm also in school right now, too. So it's school plus everything else I'm trying to do. And then just, like, being overworked, sometimes it's, like, my head telling me, like, rest, dude. And I'm like, no, dude, I got to keep going. I got to keep doing it. I got to make sure, like, um, putting it on, make sure I'm building it. Um, which also, like, the reason why I don't get enough sleep at night sometimes, because, like, I'm constantly, like, working and, like, writing. Also, speaking of writing, I also write everything about myself in, like, this journal. Um, and I also put manifestations into that journal as well, too. Like, for example, sometimes I write everything that I'm doing right now, and I'm like, okay, what's, like, the thing that's making me like the most stressful right now let me put it off to the side just for a little bit so I could focus on these things and just having like that full play and learn I'm trying to like learn how to organize it more so I could still do everything but also stay like in a healthy mindset to make sure like it's not rushed or um, I'm not overdoing myself because when the product turns out bad it feels even worse you're like damn I wasted I made myself suffer just for me to create something that I don't even like and I don't even want to put out. And without your mental, it feels like you're wandering aimlessly. Yeah, I got this project, I got this project, I got this project. But you just kind of keep going. You don't end up doing any of the projects because you know you got to do that shit, but you don't take care of it. That's me, at least. You know, I'm the type of person where if I get overwhelmed and I have too many things on my plate, I'll, I'll go to sleep. I'll lay down, go to sleep, call it a day, and think about it the next day. That's why I always tell people when they tell me, like, oh, we got to do this shit. I'm like, that's a tomorrow problem. I, I don't got the mental capacity to handle it today. So overall, you know, I just feel like that mental health battle is something that a lot of people struggle with. And... We fail to take care of ourselves in that sense. We beat ourselves up over the fact that we think that people are waiting on us. 
we feel like, oh, fuck, I didn't do it yet. So let me make sure I get this done today. But there's no deadline. The only deadline there is is the one you set for yourself. And I guess that, you know, I talked a lot this episode, obviously, but it was stuff that had been weighing on me as well. You know, sometimes you just got to take the time to sit down and reflect. I don't do that much nowadays. So definitely sitting down and reflecting, that's important. There was this one week I was like in grind mode. I was like, got to do this, that, this and that. And then I was asking my one friend who was working on something with me. I was like, hey, can you do this and that? And and then they told me they're like, oh, I'm not I'm not trying to work today. Like, this is my my rest day. And I was like, in my head, I was just thinking like, like, that's crazy. Like you give yourself that one day to like rest or like search time out of days. And um, I was just, even though it's like something so simple, but so genius, you know, setting yourself like that rest day so you don't have to really like think about everything that's going on and having like that designated time for that. And I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your story. And I, hopefully, man, you do some big things. I'm excited to see what you got coming with Sketch Studio, with the brand, uh, the concert photography, and the Game of Skate Chicago, bro. Anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. That's going to be all for today. Make sure you go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Sad boys for real. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Radio.